Loveridge Legacy. It's a show about legacy, all things legacy, and looking at it through the lens of love and rage and lover and age. And today we're going to take a look at the concept of older linked with legacy. I um, started to uh, do some writing and I was looking at what might be called the convergence of older. And I was uh, attempting to find a way in which to understand older so that I could explain it to other people. And um, so I thought, why don't I do it through a simply serious, fun way? And therefore, I'm going to be appreciating older using 10 words starting with O. And what we're going to do is unfold them and have a little bit of uh, fun doing that. And um, my attempt here is to get you thinking about older, not so much to throw older out with the bathwater. I, I think you know that metaphor that's connected there, but more to appreciate what older actually can mean for you. Um, I know that it's sometimes a descriptor, um, it sometimes explains, sometimes it's an identifier. I, when I started to take a look at the word older, I, um, I was just getting into the end of my 50s, beginning of my 60s, and I realized the use of that word older, um, years old, that kind of idea, wasn't always just sort of sitting with me, uh, didn't settle into my uh, being me. And um, so I started to explore other use of words and try to understand what older meant. And that's what I want to um, share with you today on the Loverage Legacy Show. So again, remember it's on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, Mountain, and it's here at Wealth Learning TV on YouTube. And the other thing is please subscribe and uh, ring the bell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the chat function as well. So. I'm going to go over the words and each word like there's this is not uh, a deep research this is not scientific based or anything like that this is just me having some fun around some words so the first one was the notion of years old and i've already mentioned to you is that we use the phrase um 68 years old or 14 years old, and I started to go, well, I'm not sure that that's how I want to refer to myself. So I said, what would happen if I started using something like 55 years young? And that started to prompt me to, um, to use that phrasing. And it's actually been fun because uh, there's this whole um, storyline out there about 70 is the new 60, 60 is the new 50, so 100 must be the new 20. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I think as we sort of get a little bit older and get that gray into us, uh, we can start to look at the word older in a different way. And that's what I'm attempting to remind you about is to look at it in a different way. And that's why I uh, share with you, instead of the word older, I use the word elder, and I have fun with that word. And I'm going to do um, a show on that in terms of uh, looking at elder through 10 E-related words. And um, I'll leave that for the excitement of another show. Now, the next thing that I'd like to take a look at is others' influence. And... What's happening here is that our life isn't just about us. Our life is about others who influence us. And I have a phrase that goes like, or a question, maybe it's a, a better way. Who influences you? And in a turnaround, you influence who? So there's always an others uh, surrounding you. And as you move through life, it's looking at the influence. So this influence of you and you influencing others. And for me, I really started to pay attention to this because I was um, 
quite taken with, I like to provide information. But it wasn't until recently that someone said, well, what about the transformation or the transition element of what it is that you do? And it struck me as, hmm, interesting. I, I, I've been selling information. But people are purchasing transformation. And I went, oh, so that started to give me a little bit more appreciation of moving into our um, next 50 and doing it from, yes, there's an older story here and the others influencing, and that's why I linked it up with, with Elder. But this notion of the others influence is that I didn't get here just in and of myself. There's many giants whose shoulders I have stood on. And thank you for the anonymous person. I can't remember who gave that quote. Um, I'll have to probably go look it up and I'll put it in the show more notes. But the this notion of being with others and uh, being able to um, engage with them and learn with them and share with them and express your feelings with them will start to pop up in some of the other words that are going to be coming next. So what I'm going to share with you now is the concept of, and let's make sure I spell it correctly, opportunities. Spelling doesn't count here, but there we go. Newest opportunities. And I'm bringing this forward is that as your wisdom grows, as you find yourself moving forward in what it is that you're doing, there's many different opportunities that are available to you. Um, for some, it might be uh, traveling. Uh, for others, it might be writing. Uh, myself, I took up an opportunity of becoming a digital nomad, uh, in this case, a great digital nomad, and having sold my home, giving everything I owned away, and living life with um, those uh, boxes, those plastic boxes that I carry with me, and a few of them are stored elsewhere. But, um, I have about 10 of those that I move around with me, and uh, when I'm traveling, where I don't need it and I just have my suitcase and um, another backpack, um, I just store them at a friend's place. So there's opportunities that open up for me because I don't have to so much worry about, you know, um, locking the door and worrying about what's happening to that place. So on the flip side to that, one of the opportunities I get into is the notion of um, dog sitting, cat sitting, house sitting and being able to um, help out friends or even people I don't know who get a hold of me. So these opportunities start to unfold and I find myself living in um, different neighborhoods uh, in the city in which I work. I've lived in uh, many of the different cities, um, uh, locations. I've actually gone to friends who lived in other provinces. And um, certainly I'm going to start exploring as what might I be able to do from a house caring perspective, house sitting perspective on an international basis and why not? So newer opportunities in terms of where I live, but also opportunities in what it is that I can do and be and getting to be able to share this kind of presentation uh, to, to be able to share live feed into um, the internet world and onto YouTube. It's an opportunity to express and share and interact with people. And I, I find it uh, fabulous, <laughs> if I was to use another word, that um, comes to mind. So these newish opportunities to be able to um, explore. But I think one of the deep ones for me is a combination of research and writing. It seems to be something I'm uh, really getting more and more into. I did it for quite a bit in um, earlier in my life, and I find myself returning to it and uh, having the simply serious fun days of finding words like oh that are linked to older is a, a form of research and uh, to be able to then write about it. In this case, sharing it on the video. So the next one I wanted to take a look at is... Uh, organic 
movement. And this notion of organic, it's kind of an interesting one is because even in my own um, eating practices, how might I weave more organic into those practices so that I get uh, far more uh, nutrients, uh, better nutrients into me. And as one who is moving along in my aging process, um, the importance of uh, organic uh, material is really, really, really important. So I've been learning more about this notion of organic and the, the sense of the movement that goes with that. That's a bit of a code for something else that happens on a biological basis. I'll leave that to you. That may be way too much information. <laughs> but the other thing about organic movement is the sense of how things are fitting together, this sort of organic flow and finding ways in which to move in your own life in an organic way and not being stilted or find yourself being mechanical about it. It's sort of this naturalness to life. And I'm really uh, struck with the, the sense of being natural and really finding who I am and unfold that with others as I interact with them. Uh, there was a friend of mine who um, shared this storyline with me. He said that um, dragonflies are dragonflies. Whales are whales. Dolphins are dolphins. Birds are birds. Humans are confused. <laughs> and I've always remembered that because of what does it mean to be natural? And that's what I'm exploring and it links back to the newest opportunities as well, is the sense of the exploration of what it means to be natural. And you, we have that opportunity now presents itself, right? And I would encourage those, if you're listening to this and you wouldn't necessarily call yourself older or into elder, think about this notion of being natural. And if you're listening in, then think about that with your kids or your grandkids. What would it mean about being natural and interacting with the planet in a natural way? So that's another one to take a look at. Where we're going to go next is uh, orgasm. Orgasm enthusiasm. Orgasm. Oh, I don't know if I've spelled it correct, but here we go. Orgasm enthusiasm. <laughs> the, um, the orgasm in terms of, yes, there is this climax, and there's a biological one to that one as well. I'll leave um, that sexual uh, connection, um, the, uh, that biological function too. But I'm going to come at this from a slightly different way, and it's linked to the enthusiasm, which is uh, that sort of, the orgasmic delight of, of, of food. And for some, it might be um, a, a great wine, um, an orgasmic delight of that sunset that you see for yourself and really attempting to get into the feelings, the excitement of what's present there for you. And I know that there's uh, what are called five synthesized feelings, feelings uh, being about this sort of cognitive interpretation, this minding um, or this mental interpretation of emotions. And those five are, um, there's present, oh, gratitude is first. Uh, well, these are how I, I speak about them. Gratitude, presence, inspiration, enthusiasm, and certainty. And I attribute those to uh, Dr. John Martini. That's where I heard them from and I've sort of put them together. I'm not saying he puts them in that order. I put them in that order because it links to a component of the legacy um, project story contributions that I share with people. But this notion of the enthusiasm to enthuse, to, to breathe in, to, to breathe out um, what it is that's actually happening and to find ways um, as you are moving along in your life, uh, um, in terms of the newer opportunities that are presenting themselves, how might you find this orgasmic um, enthusiasm for what's unfolding, what you see, 
what you feel, what you taste, what you you smell, how to really bring all of that into your life and to and into again being natural, being planetary, um, and uh, being fully human with um, with others. The next one I'd like to bring to your attention is um, openness variation. Living a life where you can be open to what presents itself. Because I know that there's challenge and there's support. They sort of like two ends of a stick. They both come, they both enter into your life and it's how you deal with those variations. Maybe there's a day where there's a little bit more challenge. Uh, another day there might be a little bit more support or finding ways in which to look at the challenge and support and work with it. The variations that that present themselves and that's where i go back to the use of the word leverage in terms of love and rage is um, there's the expression of love and to evolve that in and for and from your life but occasionally you might find yourself in a little bit of a a rage and how to step out of that and leverage um, another way in which to be um, for the world with the planet and from the whole and this idea of being open to what is unfolding in front of you. Um, here, I, I've had to learn that in some ways because machine guns got stuck um, up my nose. I'm, I'm using figuratively, but actually one of them did touch the tip of my nose. But I spent time in places of the world and in war zones working and machine guns um, pointed at me uh, I had to remain open about how to deal with it because if I tried to close off, then I might miss the subtlety of what was taking place. And I, I had to really embody this notion of openness. And that's why I'm, I remain open to what's going on around me and look at the different variations that are possible. Um, friends often say is that one of the things my my greatest strengths is that I can see things from many different angles and I attribute it to this openness, uh, this variation of openness that um, I live with because of, of past experiences. Let's take a look at another one here. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of fun, which is wobbly um, oscillation. And this notion of oscillation, go back to the grandfather clock, grandmother clock, and the pendulum that's swinging back and forth. Uh, from a biology point of view, it's that predator-prey cycle. It's sort of, there's a, a, a movement, an oscillation around a central concept. Um, it's very obvious within the, um, in the clock. Uh, but if you think about, you know, the predator-prey, about taking care of each other and finding the balance to be able to uh, um, live with each other. And this oscillation um, aspect is, I found myself the other day, I don't know if you, if this has happened for you, is that I had gotten up to bed and I was just getting ready to head out and I sort of did a little wobble. <laughs> and I, I did a little uh, stutter step and I just, went, hang on a minute. Um, and I hadn't thought about it from an oscillation point of view, but later on, um, uh, it came apparent. I'll explain that connection. But there's another time that I was walking and I found myself sort of going sort of a little bit sideways. And I was going, what's going on? And oscillating off my center stride. And I started to realize, oh, okay, sometimes this happens. And is it something I need to go get checked out? And I would encourage you if something like that's happening is um, you may want to think about, um, is there something here more that I need to get taken care of. And that's where you might seek um, support uh, from uh, those who can provide that support from a, a medical, um, whether alternative or um, in the mainstream. I, I leave that decision with you. It was okay for me. I, I worked through it. I, I figured out what was going on. But what became really interesting is I found myself in my life oscillating in a couple of ways. And I mention this is because one of them led me to truly understand something about my life. 
Um, one of the times was when I was writing my um, doctoral thesis and I found myself oscillating in my uh, rocker chair. I don't know if you um, ever had one of those chairs where you knelt into them and you had the ability to rock while you were working, say, at your computer. And this day I was working on my doctoral thesis and I sort of woke up to the fact that 30 minutes went by. I hadn't concentrated on about anything that was going and typing it into the computer, but I was off thinking and, and I was down some rabbit holes and off some paths up into the mountains. I was totally distracted from what was going on. And it was sort of like I woke up to the fact that I was oscillating in this and you can hear the squeaks in my chair, right? I was oscillating on your rocking chair. You can think about it from that perspective. But what was actually happening for me is that I was keying into something that was catching up to me. And it was from a mental health point of view. And I had to actually get some support um, at that point in time. And one way I did it was I uh, did a lot of walking. And also I sought out some support and um, I asked for it. And I found myself again um, a couple of times doing that and I had to go um, get some support. Uh, some of it linked back to um, that was war zones, but that's another conversation for another day. But what was interesting is the um, about two days ago when I was thinking about what's the notes, what I was I going to share with you today, I found myself oscillating in my chair at the counter as I was having my cup of coffee and doing some writing. And in this time, I was sort of rocking in the chair, but I was also turning because it's a, like a bar stool. So I found myself moving in two to two different directions. And I thought, that's kind of interesting. And I reminded myself of these other past examples. This wasn't so much from a mental health point of view, but this was a, a deeper thinking. And so I started to appreciate this notion of how that might stimulate my thinking. And so sometimes now I find myself, I might do some rocking in the chair or I might oscillate back and forth. And um, that's where walking really helps is because in some ways, you know, walking is an activity of falling. Ever heard that? Is you're taking a step and your step is almost, you're falling, but you get your next step in there and your next step. So it's sort of a, a form of oscillating. And um, I went, this is interesting. This is interesting. So where else could I use something like this, the, that pendulum movement and um, understanding it's okay to be a little bit wobbly at times, like falling while walking and that kind of thing. Not in the sense of falling down while walking. Okay, I've had that happen. Um, I, I tripped on those cement, uneven cement uh, blocks that make up the sidewalk. And um, yeah, I did a number on myself at that time. But the, this notion of understanding about oscillating and it's okay to have a little bit of a wobble to it. Um, and so I, I leave that with you to, to think about. I find it it's useful uh, walking and for, and for my writing. The next one I wanted to bring up was operational assistance. And this one links to being willing to ask for help. <laughs> the ask, to ask questions of others to help you in how to operate whatever it is that you're learning. For some, it might be, how do I operate my computer? For some, it might be, how do I get in and create a, um, a, a live stream event on YouTube or Facebook? And you, maybe you don't know how to do it. So asking for that assistance. Um, another one might be is asking for assistance in how to cook up a, an organic a vegetarian meal. And you have one of your um, grand nieces loves to do that. Well, ask and, and get involved. So I'm using this operational assistance in the widest sense about being able to ask and, and get others. Remember, I, I spoke about others' influence uh, earlier, is to, to get involved with um, others so that you can ask them for some assistance. 
even today, there's lots of things that I'm asking for. I'm, I'm reaching out to people now to do some research about writing um, about the transition of this uh, notion of older elder mentor. And so I'm interviewing people and asking for their assistance. And that's to help me to operationalize um, some programs that I can offer. And again, you might find that this might be of interest to you in terms of how can I ask questions of others to figure out about things that I want to do to engage in newer opportunities, to sort of have that orgasmic enthusiasm in my life. So ask, be amazed what will happen. And the next one I wanted to take a look at is the sense of um. And this one is to bring out the, uh, the connection to um, the soul, the spirit, the whole, and to be able to think about weaving that into your life. Uh, the om is um, a sacred mantra that uh, certainly has um, an Eastern uh, connection to it. Um, I learned a little bit of it through uh, some Buddhism and uh, Hinduism that um, I was connected with at the time. And to be able to say "Om" and the vibration that goes with that, the oscillation that goes with that. But the interesting thing is, and I'll, I'll speak to this, is the vibration is more, um, if you think about stringing um, a guitar, uh, strumming, strumming a guitar. And uh, so the um, there is a bit of an oscillation, um, 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 but there's also the, the vibration that goes with it. I may not be doing it justice at the moment, but I think what you're, I, I, I believe you know what I'm trying to get at here is the, the spiritual, soul, um, a holistic uh, perspective of this um and weaving it into your life. And I mention it not only to connect with whatever uh, practice you, you might have, spiritual, religious practice, but your willingness, not but, and your willingness to explore other ways in which to bring this sort of spiritual connection or religious connection into your life and, and maybe open up to some um, other possibilities, other ways in which to um, gain some influence from others so that you can learn um, about ways in which to operationalize that into your into your life and and have fun doing that. The last one that I wanted to share is what's called or contributions. And you'll notice it's O A R. <laughs> Not O-R or O-R-E, this one's O-A-R. It's actually an acronym. I, it's not mine, I attribute it to someone else. It's anonymous again. I've been attempting to search down someone who used this. And um, so I'm just gonna put it into action again, standing on the shoulders of others. Um, the, the notion of OR is about, O is for ownership. Um, to own something. When I think of um, older, I think about the now. And as you move into elder, it's about owning that transition that you have so that you can sort of get into this world, a mentor, and have won um, some of the achievements. Uh, maybe you've got certification, whatever. But it's this notion of own that journey. Um, to have ownership for what it is that you do, have ownership for the years old, ownership for the other's influence and working with them, you influencing others, the ownership of newer opportunities or newer opportunities, the organic movement for yourself, the orgasmic enthusiasm, the openness variation, the wobbly os oscillation, the operational assistance and the um finding ways to own those different elements and weave them into your life and celebrate them, appreciate them, appreciate this notion of older that is now before you. Now the A and the R reference accountability and responsibility. So if you're going to get into this ownership of these, you've got to be accountable for 
your contribution, your commitment to this and be responsible to do what it is you say you're going to do, fulfill those commitments, to have the courage to be able to do it. So to live um, this notion of an older life, where I would call it an elder life and move uh, from an O to an E, is to recognize these ways of appreciating um, being older and not throwing older out with the with the bathwater, but embracing it in ways that you can move into the world of elder. And that's what I'm going to pick up on another call, um, another show, so that you might be able to um, get a sense of what it means to be me. And I'm referencing what would you call me? And I have this sense of me now as being an older, and I've deepened that and appreciate that. And that's why I wanted to share um, a lot of these O related words because they, they have, they're in my life now. And I thought that um, maybe from an information point of view, they would be of value to you. But I'm going to encourage you, there might be something here if you take an action or actions. And a way to do that is there's three questions you could ask about each one of these. And that is, um, so what? What else? And now what? And there we go. So ask yourself for each one of these, all right? And just take um, the or uh, contribution. So what would that mean to me? What else would I need to think about or do? And so what would happen if I took up the or contributions, the ownership, the accountability, the responsibility? Where could I do it in my life? Where is it that I could go through some transition to be able to deepen and enrich my life? And one of those ways is to take up the mantle of elder and move that into mentor. That's one way. Um, another way might be is you might find um, a, a way in which to be more open with even in your family and friends and, and ask, okay, if I'm going to be open, so what would that mean? Um, what else would I have to do? And so what would probably take place if I opened up more in, um, in my family and friends? And I know sometimes for those who are professionals, employed, entrepreneurial, and they've given it all, um, sometimes it's at the expense of broken relationships and broken relationships with self, the, the self-care. And if you find yourself in that position, I just use it as an example. So with that, that's what I wanted to share today. Appreciating older, whether it's an identifier, descriptor, a way to explain, and um, doing it through some O-related words, uh, old, others, opportunities, organic, orgasm, uh, openness, oscillation, operational, um, and or. <laughs> so I leave that with you. And uh, again, comments afterwards is great. Uh, the next Leverage Legacy Show will be next Saturday. And uh, I would and certainly invite you to join. I always appreciate if you come in and you can join the chat function. And it's at 10 a.m. Mountain on the YouTube channel, Wealth Learning TV. So again, subscribe and ring the bell, comment, like, and share. And with that, I wish you a fabulous, seems to be a word that I'm remembering today. And um, we'll see you next week. Take care.